This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, our guest tonight is one of my best, oldest friends, not that we're that old, uh, the mayor of Tuskegee, Mr. Johnny Ford. Johnny, good to have you on the show. Steve, it's always good to see you. You were my best man once. Yes, sir. <laughs> Johnny and I go way back. We serve yeah. in the legislature together, and uh, he has been an iconic mayor of Tuskegee. Took a little reprieve and went in the legislature about eight or 12 years, didn't you? Yeah, about six, actually. That's six. when we served together. No. Yeah. But then now, you, how many years have you been mayor of Tuskegee actually, altogether? Actually, about 30. 30 years. 30 years. But you know yeah. what? Folks don't realize this, but, and I may be wrong about this in the mayor's thing, but people in politics don't have retirement. Yeah. You well, don't, do you have retirement with Mayor well, Tuskegee? Can y'all well, get mayors get retirement? Sure we can. We oh, you had a utility board? Exactly, that, that's why exactly. it is, okay. However, before they cut the law off, uh, uh -huh. uh, we, we were paying into the retirement system, and we were able to get it right before the cap, 25 years. So you, your time as mayor can count as you, and you have to get a sure, retirement? Sure, sure. But most mayors can't, can they? Well, because um, many mayors are part-time. Well, the Constitution and, prohibits it, too. Well, the mayor of Montgomery can't get a uh, retirement. I don't know can. what Montgomery can do, <laughs> but in Tuskegee, <laughs> we paid into the retirement system uh, before they cut it off. And um, uh, as a public servant, if you put uh, retirement into the retirement system, you should be able to get it out. Well, you know, people don't realize this, but people think <laughs> I got some kind of retirement from being in the legislature. Well, uh, we get no retirement from the legislature. Well, that's a different ball game. Yeah. Legislature, you and I both served in legislature. Yeah. <laughs> you know how that is. We had a good time, uh, didn't we, John? Uh, no, we got some things done too. We sure did. And I want to thank you for always supporting Tuskegee University, and you know I supported Troy State. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked together. You were a Republican, and I was a Democrat. I wasn't always and a Republican. I, and I wasn't always a Democrat. That's so, right. I mean, but the point is, I'm a Democrat now, and that's why I'm out here working so hard mm -hmm. to see some changes made. Speaking of that, um, do you see any Democrats winning statewide? I see Joe Hubbard becoming the next Attorney General of the state of Alabama. Luther Strange has been so unfair. You know, there was a time when I was basically the only one calling for an ethics uh, commission, uh, uh, look, look, asking them to look into his, his dealings. Because the man uh, just has done so many things that are not legal, they are unfair, and I'm so happy now that the people of Alabama, they know about it. It's public information. Uh, Joe Hubbard is a young man, Lister Hills, family mm -hmm. tradition, who uh, is asking the people of Alabama to give him an opportunity to be fair, open-minded, and to serve all of the people. We all know what happened with Luther. The Native Americans put millions of dollars into the campaign that benefited him once he was in office. He used his office to come and close down Victory Land. That's, that's not fair. Victory Land, we voted on the, all forms of, 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 of bingo. And uh, it, the citizens voted on a constitutional amendment calling for bingo to be played in any forms. We didn't make it, it didn't make us any difference. Electronic bingo machines, paper, um, however you play, we wanted to make sure that the people had an opportunity to play. Why? Because our schools were on the verge of closing. Why? We needed jobs for our people. Luther Strange, in the middle of the night, comes in. Uh, ties up all the state troopers, comes in, shut down a legal business. And now the people of Alabama see through him, and they are going to, in my opinion, they're going to come out and they, they, they're not going to support him. I mean, this is black, whites, uh, Native Americans, African Americans, people in general across the state. So I see uh, Joe Hubbard becoming the next Attorney General of the state of Alabama. Johnny, let's go back. And, and just talk to our viewers about the history of that situation. And, and I think they will see for themselves yeah. the, um, the complexity and unfairness and the prejudicial aspects of what Bob Riley did yes. as well as what Luther Strange has done. Now, 
and hypocritical. Uh, let's go back historically and let's go back to the year and everything. Let me set the precedent first by saying okay. this. Our Alabama Constitution has been called antiquated <laughs> and outdated and archaic, mm -hmm. which it is. Yes. It is the most amended Constitution in America. Yes. It was designed in 1901 by black belt planters and big mules in Birmingham to keep poor people, white and black, yeah. disenfranchised, without, with low paying jobs, on the farm, yeah. low property taxes, and it also wrested all the power in Montgomery. So therefore, yes. if any county or city government wants to do anything, especially county governments, they have to go to the legislature and get a constitutional amendment. Johnny and I as legislators would sit That's there right. hours on end voting on whether Fayette County wanted a tractor or not for their county commission. <laughs> I would sit there all day and say, Lamar County wants to uh, have coon hunting. <laughs> Fayette County wants to have a tractor. Here, I'm a Pike County, I'm voting on their reason whether they want to raise their ad valorem tax. I mean, if Mountain Brook wants to raise the ad valorem tax, well, first of all, I know the people out my ain't going to vote for it because it's from Mountain Brook, but, but nevertheless, <laughs> we got to pass this stuff. So the whole morning, I'm sitting there yeah. Hitting my button, oh. probably building up a voting record that some anybody can take and destroy because I'm probably voting about 16 taxes for, for certain counties, you know. Yeah. So anyway, to set the stage, the legislature has to let a constitutional amendment be on the ballot. Right. Now, in what year was that taking place the first time, Johnny Ball? I'm not trying to put you on the Oh, spot. I can tell you exactly. In uh, 2003. In 2003, you and I both were legislators. Exactly. Me from Pike, you from Macon. Uh, and we had a constitutional amendment brought by Representative Johnny Ford from the county of Macon. Yes. He came to the legislature in an appropriate way. And Johnny, I remember this. You came yeah. over to my desk and said, Steve, we're fixing to have a constitutional yeah. amendment. It wasn't like you trying to blindside no. anybody. Oh. You courteously went to every, every member of the legislature everyone. and says, my legislative my county wants to vote on whether we want to have bingo, bingo or not. I said, well, sure, Johnny. I mean, I'm, if your county yeah. wants to have bingo, and, and it wasn't like we were going to mandate it. Yeah. We just wanted to vote, we'll on, vote it. on it. Just, vote, just, let, right just let my people vote <laughs> on whether they want bingo or not. Well, now, how can be against that? I don't know how many people voted against your local bill. I don't know if there's anybody voted against it or not. No, no one did. It I mean, passed so, unanimously. Okay, so it passes the legislature <laughs> unanimously, and it gets on the ballot. Right. And if I d done properly, and, and John, let me say this too in, in saying this. I remember explicitly <laughs> you telling me, Steve, I have gone to the four corners of the world. Right. I've gone to experts, and I right. think you said Iowa. Somewhere. No, I went to California. California. To the National Meeting of State Legislators, right. our annual convention. Did due diligence. Exactly. And uh, had they, experts. <laughs> had experts. And now we're going to have not just bingo. There was no hidden agenda here. No, there, everything was up front. It was legally done constitutionally. Steve, we're going to have electronic bingo. Well, I never had played electronic bingo. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I didn't care. Yeah. I mean, you, you, know, you were trying to explain what it was going to do. So, okay, you get it passed the legislature unanimously. It goes on the ballot very, very properly, very legally, the way the forefathers built the Constitution of Alabama, a constitutional well, amendment. Right. It ain't a local bill. It's a con constitution. It's going to be voted on by the people of Macon yeah. County. Yes. Okay, then it goes on the ballot in 2004 or 03. 2003, November the, same year. November the 2nd. As a matter of fact, even before then, it was cleared by the U.S. Department of Justice. Another you know? hurdle. Yep. Everything, everything, every T crossed, every I dotted. Everything. The most legal. perfect, clean legislation anybody could have ever had. Voted on by people in Macon County. What was the nut result? 76% other people voted yes. And they voted on bingo, and I carefully worded it simply bingo. I didn't say electronic, I didn't say cars, I said bingo because I wanted our people to play all forms of bingo. The seniors could play on their little cars, the Victory Land could have the electronic machines, they could have the computer, because we, want, we listen, at that point, the Native Americans had the edge. They had electronic They already bingo. had it. They already time. had it. Okay. They were already here. So how is a dog track going to compete with that? 
Victory Lane was on the verge of borrowing money to stay open. They were down to 300 employees. Once no, we, no, when you first started, was the Indian, were the Indians doing business in 2003? They came afterwards, didn't they? Yeah, they, well, the Native Americans already had electronic bingo machines during 2003. They did. They were not already only doing did, Not only did they have it, Steve, but it was all over the country. All okay. over. We just didn't have it. See, I was doing something in, in, in the... It was in, nothing, nothing new. Uh, it looks like a slot machine, but it is an electronic bingo machine. Plus that, once I saw what it was about, I brought samples and pictures of the machines back to Macon County and to Alabama so that the people could see. Uh, the Attorney General's uh, office took the position that the people didn't know what they were voting on. This they, is after the fact. This uh, is after the fact. Well, let's keep, keep it on a sequence. Now, let's see, it passed in 2003. Now, no, when did no, Victory Land open? No, no, it passed November 2nd, 2003, and by December, before Christmas, we had bingo in, in, in Victory Land and in Macon County. So Victory Land started right after that. Oh, yeah. 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 They in terms of bingo, the now, they we, were doing the we dogs, were already right? doing the dogs. Uh -huh. But hey, dogs can't compete with electronic no, no, bingo machines. Can't uh -huh. compete with casinos. You really need to, have, you need to have lights and music and food and gaming and entertainment, all those kinds of things. So it started flourishing. Exactly. By, by, by the year 2004, and we were rolling. Let's say it rolls on five or six years. Now, that's, that's, that's pretty credible, too. Here it's going <laughs> five or six years. No problem. Who's attorney general during that time? Who's yeah. governor? Well, first of all, Riley was the governor. Well, Riley then, didn't come governor in 96, yeah, I don't believe. Yeah, but, but what, no, what I'm saying is, let's talk about the bingo years. Or right, from 96, uh, to, no, he came in 2006, I believe, 2006. To, now, Steve, 2003 is where we started. He came in in 2002, a governor. Oh, oh yeah, a governor. Yeah, so sure he's did. governor he's when it governor. passes. Yeah. He's governor. No problem at all, mm -hmm. matter of fact. But he let it roll on, let it roll on. Five until, or six years. Yeah, but until his final year in office. Which was 2011. He knew that he had to. Nine. He knew that he had promised the Native Americans that he, once he got in office, he was going to shut down the opposition. Mm -hmm. And he did that. I guess those Indians said they were going to scalp him if he didn't. Mm -hmm. But somehow, at the last minute, he pulls a raid and in the middle of the night shuts down an operation that had generated more than 2,000 jobs, millions of dollars so for my 2, schools. So 2,000 people were employed in the facility. 2,000 or more. That's, uh -huh. I mean... Uh, it was the single most um, powerful and most influential business-wise uh, business in the, in the entire city and county of Macon County. How much did it to, mean to your city? It you? meant millions of dollars. First of uh, all, it was Just my, a utility bill. That's what I was about to tell you. It was my <laughs> largest utility customer, uh -huh. $2.5 million utility customer, uh -huh. plus all of the taxes and the revenue generated. People were able to pay their bills, they build homes and pay their rent, uh, buy grocery and just spend money. It was the engine, the economic engine for Macon County. Of course, we worked just as hard. You and I uh, worked hard to get Hyundai all over the state, and you helped me as well as others to get a Hyundai plant in Macon County. That's good, but on the Hyundai plant, we spent millions of dollars of Alabama tax dollars as enticement mm -hmm. to bring in Honda, Hyundai, uh, Mercedes, and all of those. Those are good, but you had to spend money. Take Victory Land, the state didn't have to spend anything. It was and is a homegrown Alabama industry. And a not business. just that, I've seen figures, Johnny, that say that there were so many people coming from Atlanta to Victory Land that it could have been one of the biggest out-of-state attractions coming into the state. It was, right on I-85. Uh -huh. You go up there now sitting idle, uh, a multi-million dollar hotel, a uh, nice complex. I mean, it's just, it's unfair what Luther Strange has done. Well, Riley Boston started it. So Riley did it first. Riley, and you was asking about the Attorney General. You know, we had uh, Troy King. Right. Troy King actually did due diligence. He inspected the machines and finally made the decision that the machines were legal. And Riley arbitrarily overruled the Attorney General. As, as a matter of fact, not only overruled him, but uh, helped defeat him. I mean, that mm -hmm. was, it was just that cold. Uh, we did everything according to the law. Personally, I don't gamble, but 
people ought to have the opportunity to vote on gambling or gaming or anything else. They ought to have the right to enjoy themselves in entertainment, to, uh, to go to these uh, places of entertainment. And what's so bad about it is, is many of these other facilities that are now run by the Native Americans, many of those facilities, I believe, are, are controlled by out-of-state interest. You don't see, I mean, you see the people from Las Vegas and other places, IGT is headquartered in Nevada. They produce 75% of the machines in the world. Mm -hmm. And here we are in Macon County with a homegrown industry which generated over 2,000 jobs and millions of dollars for our community. Yet the Attorney General closes it down. And everyone in the state knows what is happening. Well, I think that's why his numbers are down. Yeah. I, no think, I think people generally are for, 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 for fairness. That's all we're asking for, mm -hmm. fairness and mm -hmm. honesty in government. You know, two years ago, I was out there by myself virtually calling upon the Ethics Commission to look into Luther Strange, calling for the people of Alabama to look into uh, what he was doing. But now I feel so happy when I can sit back and see uh, uh, the people all over the state now understand what Luther Strange was doing. I mean, it's just unfair. And I'm convinced that on election day, Joe Hubbard is going to be elected. Uh, I'm hopeful that people will pull uh, uh, the straight Democratic ticket, obviously, because we've got my good friend uh, Jim Fields is running for lieutenant governor, and uh, we have uh, Parker Griffith uh, who's running for governor. But the point is, I know Joe Hubbard. Um, it has a good chance, and your question is, do you think that, that there's going to be a chance? I'm convinced that all the Democrats have a good chance, but Joe Hubbard really does have the opportunity to become the well, next Attorney General. Polling shows be close. I think that's one of the reasons. I think that's yeah, one of the reasons. Yeah, they see, may have a selective prosecution process. And, uh, but now, having said that, currently, uh, and viewers in Montgomery are more aware of this issue than some other parts of the state, which is our viewing audience. The last litigation has been that when Luther Strange and his cronies went out there and seized the machines at Victory Land. And by the way, here's another thing. <laughs> yeah. Every one of these other places is just operating. <laughs> They're back, operating again, yet Macon County. You know, that question is posed to me whenever I'm on <laughs> CBS 8 or anything, and we have more talk back show, they say, well, how can one of them be open and the other ones aren't? I mean, that's, I mean, it's like. Uh, well, just like Lowndes County reopened the other day. I think ultimately, um, uh, you see, the problem is with Macon County, Macon County was hurt so badly. Not only did he come in and take and destroy the machines, but they were so mean, they destroyed the wiring and the wherewithal to even have the, 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 the horse racing, the summer casting, all of that was destroyed. They destroyed the machines, they took the money, and then they stopped uh, the, the summer casting. And then even the liquor license was, was, t was taken away. And we had to go uh, essentially before the uh, Alcoholic Beverage Control Board to even get the liquor license. And so I, Victory Land has been hurt economically so much it's going to take a lot to get it started again. And there's no need of, of reopening as long as Luther Strange is Attorney General. He can come and close them down again. I think that he is trying to, you know, there's some, I hate to say it, but the truth is it's got to be some racial motivation there too. But now here's a, here's a, here's a thing about that though. Why is, why is he allowing Green County to operate and not Macon? I can't, the it makes Green. It. Green, makes no sense. I mean, Green County. He's just scared of Green County. Well, they've been so mean to him up there. The well, sheriff stood there and said, "Well, you're not closing my place down." <laughs> and we've got a sheriff now who's going to take the same position. Well, what and, do you think the reason for that is? Well, I think it now, is. That's not racial because Green County is not uh, a white county. Well, there's no question about it. Uh -huh. You know, the the point is, uh, Macon County and Tuskegee, Alabama, is the citadel of of African American. Uh, education, leadership, politics, economics. Uh, there's something special and there's a lot of pride that we have of uh, being Tuskegee and Macon yeah. County. And for him to come and, and, and unfairly close down Tuskegee and Macon County, 
that sends a signal. That signal to us is one that is very, very prejudicial. It's one that is violating our voting rights. And if he can get away with closing down Tuskegee and Macon County, then uh, he feels that he can get away with anything. But we're not going to take it. Our first step is to vote Luther Strange out of office. Once he's out of office, then you'll see Macon County and Victory Land reopen. Governor Green Bentley, let me just say this. Governor Bentley, you know, has <clears throat> influence in, in Green County. You asked the question, why? Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Bear oh, Bryant, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The whole relationship uh -huh. there uh, with Green County. They're very close to Tuscaloosa. Oh, Paul Jr. Oh, yeah. oh so that's right. Uh, but the mm -hmm. point is, whether it's Macon County or Green County, uh -huh. Luther Strange and the governor has the power as well uh -huh. to stop this. All he has to do is stroke it and say, stop it. Uh, but the point is, we're not arguing anymore. We're going to vote. What they have done is they have nullified our vote. We were in court not long ago. We were in the federal court, and we had no success in Alabama or at the uh, circuit level uh, in Atlanta. But now, Johnny, the angle you went at in federal right. court was based on a civil rights play exactly. uh, issue. What, what I'm wondering is, and as, a, as a, and I'm not a lawyer, That's okay. is... is if someone took it to a to a federal court right. and says, look, uh, whether it's black or white or uh, whatever, this county has done a constitutional amendment. Now, doesn't the constitutional well, amendment supersede some statute that's, uh, that says you can't have certain bingo? I mean, I would think that your statute overrules that, that you've gone and your people have voted for a statute that says, yes, we want bingo, and so therefore you're outside a, a quote, statute yeah. that's sitting on the books like that. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you supersede. Because we are a constitutional exactly. amendment. I would think a federal court would look at Alabama's constitution. I don't think our state Supreme Court is going to do that, but oh, if you no. got it in the federal <laughs> court, if yeah. they looked at it and said, look, this is the way it's been done for 100 years in Alabama. Counties go to, the, to the, the legislature, they get a thing, put it on amendment. A constitutional amendment would supersede Seems a statute. It, it most, most definitely I would think does. that. I mean, it, it was, that, it's just that simple. That y'all have said, and it's not just y'all, not the only county, four or five other counties have copied you and do the same thing. And I just, that's almost like so, saying to, to Jefferson County, uh, you can't have a constitutional amendment saying you can, uh, you know, the point is, Steve, we are not going to stop. We started out in the federal court. Then finally the state court uh, case came up about a month, a month or so ago. And as you know, I was one of the lead witnesses in that case. Our case was so strong. As a matter of fact, incidentally, the man who, uh, who was uh, representing the attorney general, a few days later the attorney general, uh, dismissed him or put him on leave because he was the same man interfering with the indictment uh, with, with uh, Hubbard uh, up in, in Auburn getting involved in that case. Right. Uh, but the point is our case was so strong we're now concentrating our effort on the case in the state court because the one here in Montgomery State Exactly, court. exactly. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it was clear, it was clear before Judge uh, Sashi uh, that our case uh, indicated that Victory Land and the people of Macon County had been done wrong by them closing down uh, a, a, a facility that had been voted upon by the people of Alabama uh, because they were using machines that, ha that, that had been certified by experts that they were legal. The state had no expert, no expert witness. Now, to Johnny, say that, that, that case is, is really... The decision in Judge Shashi's court is whether to release those machines. If he releases those machines, then I would perceive that Victor Lane can, can open oh, up. Oh, there's no question about it. But we intend to reopen yeah. again. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're it's putting true. out, that's the strategy that we're going to mm -hmm. concentrate on now mm -hmm. because of continuing to pursue the federal court will take years. We've got to do something now. Macon County is hurting now. 
We want Victory Land to reopen before Christmas. We want these people to go back to work. I need this money for my schools, my city, for my county, for my 60 charities. That's why we're going to put our efforts on this case. Mm -hmm. If we're not successful at the Montgomery level, we'll go to the Alabama Supreme Court. And then, if we're not successful then, then we'll go to the United States Supreme Court through this case. But the point is, we are not going to give up. The first opportunity we have to get justice is by going to the polls on November the 4th. And we intend to go by thousands to vote Luther Strange out because this man has not been fair. He has been wrong. He has taken advantage of our county. Now, in spite of all of this, Steve, you may want to know, well, what's happening in Macon County? We're not putting all of our eggs in one basket. We are still working. Our Hyundai plant, which you and others helped me to get in Macon County, has now over 500 or 600 people working. Uh, that uh, has helped our economy tremendously. We're working now on I-85 to attract hotels, restaurants, and service stations. Here again, you supported me when I was in the legislature because I annexed the interstate mm -hmm. so that when we build the new hotels and the new restaurants and service stations, that money will benefit the city of Tuskegee. Uh, we're working now that Tuskegee, uh, the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site has been completed. Thousands of tourists are coming from all over the nation to see uh, the courage of the, the flying, fighting Tuskegee Airmen. This is becoming one of the number one tourist attractions in the state of Alabama. And so I don't want people to get the impression that uh, Victory Land is our only hope. Uh, Victory Land will play a great role in terms of developing our community and our county economically, but we're working just as hard to develop other commercial outlets to bring in industry and business. We have the only CSX uh, site located on a railroad uh, in the state of Alabama that's already been approved. So uh, we're working very much to promote Tuskegee uh, the home of Tuskegee University, land of Dr. George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington and the Commodores and Lionel Richie, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, promoting it as an entertainment uh, center as well, a place of history and uh, historic significance. So we are, we're not going to let the closing of Victory Land stop us. But on the other hand, we want Luther Strange and everyone else to know we shall not stop. <laughs> Well, Johnny, you wise not to put all your eggs in one basket and get everything else going y'all have got going in Tuskegee. But again, my friend, our time's up. Our yeah. time goes by in a hurry. Uh, folks, our guest tonight has been uh, Tuskegee Mayor, long time, 30-year mayor of Tuskegee, uh, Johnny Ford. And uh, uh, we want to thank y'all for watching tonight. We thank Johnny for being with us. And we hope you tune again next week for This Week in Alabama Politics. Great. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Ready.